Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, th uh, members of the committee, thank you so much for uh, your patience today and uh, having us today and, and all our witnesses. Um, as I said in the beginning, this, this hearing is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, as, as literally, as soon as I get back to my office, I'm signing the pleadings to file a suit in Superior Court where we will be pleading and, and proving um, the allegations that we've made here today. Um, of the irregularities and the abject failure of the Secretary of State and the counties to properly conduct the election. Um, and we believe it's impossible to certify the election results. Today, you've heard and you've seen a video of the, uh, uh, what happened with the Fulton County election officials in violation of OCGA section 21-2-483B which says all proceedings of election officials are to be open to the public. And you saw them order our folks out of the room. Uh, you saw them order the media out of the room, and then they continued to order and continued to operate after they ordered everybody out of the room. You also saw them take ballots out of, from under the table and pull them out. That is a clear, clear violation of Georgia law. You heard our witnesses today testify. You heard Scott Walter talk about money flowing into 44 counties out of 159 that was allegedly for COVID, that clearly was not used for COVID. You heard Grace Lemon, a wonderful young lady from the University of Georgia who did her civic duty and tried to vote. And somebody took her, her constitutional right away and voted for somebody. In, in, you heard, and I would please respect my, my time to speak. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you, you heard uh, Mark Amick, who witnessed illegal activities by the election officials in both Fulton County and in DeKalb County. And he had disputed te testimony of, of the Secretary of State of what did, did not happen uh, that night in Fulton County as well as our video evidence. You heard Su Susie Voiles, a 20 year veteran who's been a poll watcher. And I, I personally know Ms. Voiles. She, she's a neighbor and, and a wonderful lady. She is about as conscientious a, a person as I've ever known to, uh, and you heard, you heard the, in her sincerity in her voice of how hard she works and how sincere she is about getting things right uh, and, and not in a partisan way, but wanting to do things in a right way and in a transparent way. And she saw these pristine ballots that had no folds um, that were all for uh, Vice President Biden. You heard Dana, Dana Smith talk about, with, again, with passion, even though it was a county that was, that was carried uh, by uh, President Trump by a large margin. She talked about irregularities. You heard about, <clears throat> you heard from Bridget Thorne, who worked uh, uh, as a subcontractor for uh, the Dominion, about how they just let these um, test ballots just uh, lie around with no security. Who knows what, what they did with those ballots? And those were the ones that, they were in the State Farm Arena. They were in the, in the State Farm Arena, the same place where they were counting ballots, and they were just lying around. Th those could have been the ones that were in those suitcases. You heard from, from of course, Professor Eastman, who talked about the constitutional uh, duties and rights. So, as I said, in conclusion, the actual result of legal ballots cast in November 3rd in compliance with the Georgia Election Code cannot be known ever not by the Secretary of State, not by the governor, not by the voting public, and not by the Georgia legislature. That's why we, the election must be vacated and can, cannot be allowed to stand. Again, thank you very much for your time and your patience today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to call Mr. Tony Burrison now. <clears throat>